Hey guys, it, it is really a privilege to be here and, and I have this sense tonight, God is going to do something extraordinary in our midst. He's going to actually turn up and he's wanting to speak a truth to every single one of us about who he is and who you are. You know, it took me a long time to kind of figure it out and, and that verse that we've been camping in today, you know, the, those couple of verses of the fact that, that we have this thing in our lives, this sinful nature that, that draws us back into this place of just wanting to do things in our own strength. And, and we know that God's kind of there, but, but the Spirit of God comes upon us and, and acts as this conviction in our lives at times. You know, it took me forever to get that. And I wish I had more time. I wish I could tell you my entire story, but just let me tell you a snippet of it and, it, and tell you the experience I had in, in really this, this revelation of who God was in my life. You know, so... I grew up in a Christian home, like many of you would know, and, and by the time I was nine years of age, I watched my dad over five years just battle with cancer, and he went from being a superman, my superman, you know, to being a man who was just a shell of, of who he once was. He was 48 kilos the day he died. He was 100 before he got sick. He was six foot, my mum's four foot 11, I know, I'm, what happened to me? Yeah, I'm somewhere in between. My mum's quite cute though, so we forgive her. But, but dad, when, when, he, when he died, I, I mean, I, there was so much stuff going on in my life and, and I, was, I was angry. I realized, I, I, although I knew of God's existence and, and my mum would drag me to church every single Sunday, you know, almost forcing me to go, which I hated. I, I could tell you how many bricks were up the back of the church and, and the verse that was written there. I, I, you know, I couldn't tell you one thing that probably, you know, any preacher said. Sorry, Watson, if you're here. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's so funny though because I realized that despite knowing who God was, I didn't actually know him. And, and I was like I was living a double life. You know, I, I would go to church on Sunday just to appease my mum. And then, and then in the rest of the week, I was so angry at God and could not believe that God who tells me that he loves me would actually take away my dad, the person who, who I loved more than anyone in the world, in, in such a gruesome, horrible way. You know, I, I, I couldn't make those two things compute. And I was so angry and pent up that, that I found that the only expression I found that I could actually get out with was to, was to get into fights. I would pick fights with anyone that I possibly could. And it wasn't too long before that led into a, a world of gangs. And, and I found myself just in this, in this world that I, I'd lost control in and, and it, was, it was horrible. But yet every Sunday, I'd rock back up to church and I'd put on the, the good boy act and I'd turn up and, and, and try and be the person that surely my mother, who was grieving, wanted me to be. But come Monday, I was straight back into the, my real world of just anger and pent-up frustration and fighting and drugs and all sorts of stuff and things that I knew were not good for me. But it was my flesh that was just drawn to that because it was the only place I felt I could really express who I was. You know, and, and it's funny, before I go too deep, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's funny watching yourself between these two things of feeling like you're living a double life, this real battle that exists between people of, 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 of knowing what you think should be who you are and then experiencing who you really are. Isn't that depressing? You know, I remember I watched this film once and, and they had these subtitles that came up and, and I, it tickled my fancy because the subtitles that came up when they were speaking this gibberish actually said, if you let me go free, you can use my friend's head for polo. All right? So I rewound this thing so many times I could learn it. It was, Kama, Alice away, Zimara pizza de polo, esta pala karamashai. That's what it was, right? You, if you want to learn how to do it, you can come up and speak to me later. You know, in the midst of this battle of, of actually knowing that, that there was a God, but not really wanting to believe him and, 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 and feeling really angry, in the midst of all that, I remember being on a train once, I was there and, and you know, I was in gangs, so I could do what I wanted on public transport. I could put my feet on the seats, didn't matter. I didn't have to buy tickets. I could get on there. Like, who was going to stop me? Anyway, I'm on this train once and this, uh, this, this inspector, ticket inspector comes along and it's like an, way back in the day, it was an $80 fine, which may not seem like much now, but back then it was huge. $80 fine for having your feet on the seats and $180 for not having a valid ticket. So this guy comes along with me and one of the, comes along to me asking for tickets and one of the beauties about looking like me is that I look like I speak another language. So you can see where this is going, right? He comes up and he's asking me for a ticket and I'm like, Kama, alesu wa zimara pizza de polo, esta palakaramashai. And he was like, no, 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 you, where, where's your ticket? Kama, alesu wa zimara pizza de polo, esta palakaramashai. I just kept repeating it over and over again, thinking, gee, I hope he doesn't cotton on. And so finally, the next stop comes, and he's kind of gotten frustrated at me, shaking his head at me, moved on to the next person. So I jump off the train. It wasn't my stop. I jump off the train, and as I'm there, just the doors are about to close. I go, oi, thanks, mate. <laughs> the train rocks on. But you know what? And I mean, that's kind of funny that I got away with it. But the point is this, is that 
I was so convicted that actually I did the wrong thing. You know, I knew that I did the wrong thing, but yet because I thought I could get away with it and because I didn't want to bear the consequences, I actually stepped into that space of knowingly doing the wrong thing. You know, and every single one of us goes through this battle, don't we? That when we know what the consequences are of our actions, the, the hurt that we do to people, the, the, the pain that actually happens, despite that, we still choose to do it because that's what the flesh draws us to. We're afraid of consequences. We don't want to stand up to what we know is right. We just want to try and take the easiest road and the easiest path ahead of us because we don't want to pay the fine. We don't want to be in trouble. We don't want people to think the wrong thing of us. We just want to keep that whole facade going on. And if you can actually get away with it, you will. That's human nature. That's the thing that we're talking about. That's what Paul writes in Galatians when he's talking about this, that this is the flesh that you and I exist in, that we will take the path of least resistance. And yet God wants to say to you, God wants to say to me, no, there is another way. There is a way that brings you freedom. There is a way that actually identifies who God is in your life and puts him in the rightful place. There is a way to make your life matter. There is a way to make you a world changer. There is a way to actually step into the unknown in such a way that God is actually the one that is glorified. It's not about you, it's about him. And he's saying tonight, do you want to actually choose the path less trodden? Or are you happy to keep giving in to that sinful desire that's in your heart? And you know it, your conscience knows. It is written on you, you, but through your very fabric. In Genesis, it talks about the fact that you have been created in the image of God. Everything that you know that's good and wholesome, the love that you have, the, the ability you have to be able to be kind, to be gentle, to be loving, all of that comes from God's image. All the sinful stuff, that is from our flesh. And God says, don't actually walk towards flesh, run towards my spirit. Run towards my spirit, let my image be the thing that you are known by not by the the pull of this world on your flesh my hope and prayer is that we would actually hear God's voice tonight and recognize that he is asking us he is inviting us to sprint towards his spirit not just meander but sprint into the less known to actually be able to put past that path of least resistance and actually step boldly into the unknown so that we could absolutely change the world do you believe that you can so do I, people, so do I. You know, in the very last year I was in gangs, right before I had the most amazing encounter with Jesus that I've ever had, in that last year I was in 97 fights for that year. 97. And I've got to tell you, every single time I was in one of them, I was torn. Because it was like I had almost left my body and I would watch myself do the most unthinkable things to another human being. And when it was all over and the adrenaline rush had finished... I would cry myself to sleep because I would realize the pain that I had just caused and everything in me longed to be able to just go and say, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. It's not me, it's this anger that's in my heart. But I wouldn't do it. Instead, I would sit in the pain and the wallow, not that I'd just caused, but also that was in my heart because I was so torn. The day I encountered Jesus, the most miraculous thing happened. When I gave my life to Christ, I realized this this incredible truth that Jesus has already won the battle he doesn't expect me to come to him being perfect he expects me to come in my brokenness in my pain he expects me to come in that space and allow him to be the one to accept me just as I am and to walk with him in his perfection you see if I was perfect I'd have no need for Jesus but because I'm broken I need him every single day and I need his spirit to continually top me up He needs to keep pouring his spirit into my life so that my brokenness, my fleshly desires will continue to actually shut up and I will actually focus on what he wants. When I encountered Jesus, I remember I couldn't stand in a worship service without weeping uncontrollably. And in that space, as I wept and wept and wept, the faces of all the people that I'd hurt would flash into my mind. And it was as if the Holy Spirit would actually say to me, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. You are forgiven. No more shame, no more anger, no more doubt. You are forgiven. I could not stand in that space hearing my creator tell me I was forgiven time and time again without breaking down and crying. I want to tell you tonight, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Nothing you have done disqualifies you from the love of God. Nothing you will ever do will disqualify you from the love of God. 
He has already won the battle. The cross is already there. And this is the beautiful thing, that there is a war raging for your heart. And all you have to do is give it over. And it's done. It's done. You know, I think sometimes we get caught. We talk about slavery around this world, but we miss sometimes the truth of this, is that actually sin is the, is the greatest thing that enslaves us. It is the thing that holds us so tightly, it's ridiculous. You know, there's this beautiful story that's found of, the, of God's chosen people, the Israelites, coming out of slavery in Egypt. Let me read it to you. It's from Exodus chapter 6. This is God and he's talking. He's talking to Moses, this guy with this stutter who actually says every excuse under the sun not to be used by God. But God keeps saying to him, no, this is what I want you to tell them. He gives them the word and he says, therefore say to my people, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people. I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own. I am the Lord. He goes on to say that Moses told the people. He told them and then he comes back to God and he says, he says, but they refused to listen anymore because the people had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. The people had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. You know what? There is sin in your life right now. There is sin in your life and the evil one is actually whispering into your ear and saying, this disqualifies you. This has entrapped you. This means that you don't know what it is to be in a relationship with God because you are living a double life. You are rocking up to a place on Sunday and then actually going on and living in the brokenness, in the slavery of sin. And I want to tell you tonight, let God be God. Let him be Lord of your life. Don't think to yourself that you need to come to his space, but allow him into the messiness of where you're at. If you can do that, if you can let him be God, wherever you are in your brokenness, in your sin, in your falling, in your failing, I promise you this, that the Spirit of God will be upon you and you will keep hearing time and time again that you are forgiven, that you are loved and that you have been set free. Let him be your God, be his people. So right now as I finish up, I wanna invite you into a space just for you and God. I wanna invite every single person here just to close your eyes right where you are. Tonight, as I've been speaking, my sense is that there's two types of people here. Firstly, there's people that you actually think that you're okay. You've got kind of life sorted. You've never really asked God into that space and, and you probably don't really understand the reason for it. But I want to tell you that actually deep down inside, if you look really deep, that you do know that you need a God. You need a God who brings love and forgiveness, a message that will save you. The Bible says that the wages of sin a death let me say that again the wages of sin is death it's how sin enslaves you because its consequence is death and Jesus says let me take that burden let me pay the price let me die for you so that I can continually say no matter how many times you sin no matter how many times you're tripped up you are forgiven you are loved and you are set free and if that's you tonight and you actually know your heart's pounding in your chest right now and you know that you want that freedom, you want a life that is not about you but is about the living God. You want a life that's attached to a God who has a spirit that wants to dwell inside of you and do incredible things in and through you. If that's you tonight and you want to accept God into your life for the first time, I want you to put your hand up. So good, guys. In your heart, where you are right now, in complete stillness in this place, I'm going to actually lead you through a prayer, and I just want you to pray it in your heart. Say, God, I'm broken and I'm sinful. I'm trapped. I'm trapped by my own flesh, 
doing things that I know aren't right. But Jesus, I invite you into my life. I invite your spirit into my life. I'm sorry for all the things that I've done. I'm sorry for the things that I will do. I pray, Lord, that you would be Lord of my life and that you would constantly remind me that you love me and that you free me and that you have a plan for me. Amen. Now, just while we're still in this space, if you prayed that prayer tonight, two things I want to tell you. One, there is a party going on in heaven right now. And two, don't leave this place without telling someone. You want to cement it in your life. You want to mark a point in time to be able to come back to and say, that moment, Teen Street, 2018. I said yes to Jesus and I set myself free. And I became a world changer. Tell someone, don't leave this place. Now, there's a second person here I want to talk to. You might have made a commitment many times, but you know that actually you turn up on Sunday and you're one person. And then during the week, you rock up to school and you're someone completely different. And you know that probably if your friends got asked whether you were a Christian, they'd probably say, oh, I don't know. Maybe. I think they go to church, but I'm not really sure. And you know that actually you put on your Sunday best, not just your clothes, but who you think you're supposed to be. And you rock up to church and you play the game, you put on the facade, but it really makes no difference to you. I want to tell you that's not the life that Jesus has for you. Jesus doesn't have a plastic life. He has a real life. Don't just turn up to church and play the game. Invite him into your real life because it's through his spirit that he will transform you from the inside out. It's not about you, it's about him. If the person I've just described is you and you want to make a commitment tonight to actually start afresh, put your hand up. Father God, for every single person that's got their hand in the air right now, Lord, I want to thank you so much. And Lord, I want to pray that you invade their life in such a profound way that they see you in the brokenness, that they see you in the sin, in the mess of life, in the stuff that we think God can't possibly exist here. Lord, may you make yourself known. May your spirit convict and minister in such a way that it helps us actually break those addictions, break that anxiety, break those habits, break those things that we know that are not healthy or good for us. Help us stand up, give us courage and boldness to actually be the person that would stand up in the midst of the things that we know aren't right to be able to point to you and say it's all about Jesus. Jesus can set us free from this. Lord, help us not be so engaged and broken by our sin that we are trapped, but help us be free. Help us be free so that we can say, no longer I, but completely about him. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said... Amen.